to all visiting with us for the first time. To stay connected with us, text WELCOME to 215-440-6610. The Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. Get connected and stay connected with the Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. on our website at mtclp.church slash shop. Get your gear today. Thank you for worshiping with the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. To give your tithes, offerings, or gift of love, visit mtclp.church slash giving for all of the ways that you can give. You can text to give, give through Givelify, Give through the secure website or mail your donation to New Covenant Church of Philadelphia, 
7500 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19119.
welcome to all visiting with us for the first time. To stay connected with us, text WELCOME to 215-440-6610. The Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. Get connected and stay connected with the Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. our website at mtclp.church slash shop. Get your gear today. Thank you for worshiping with the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. To give your tithes, offerings, or gift of love, visit mtclp.church slash giving for all of the ways that you can give. You can text to give. Give through GiveLify. Give through the secure website or mail your donation 
to New Covenant Church of Philadelphia, 7500 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19119.
to all visiting with us for the first time. To stay connected with us, text WELCOME to 215-440-6610. The Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. Get connected and stay connected with the Church Center app, available on both Apple and Android devices. Welcome to the Outpouring Worship Experience with Rev. Bob Oliver of the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. Don't forget to hit the share button to invite someone to service. Feel free to sing along, shout, and clap from wherever you are as we worship together virtually. Now, let's get ready for service.
Hallelujah. Let's just worship him real quick. Let's just lift up our voices and praise God. He reigns. Thank you, God, for waking us up another day. Thank you for putting breath in our lungs. God, we just thank you and we praise you this morning. You are everything that we need. We thank you. We thank you for life, God. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for this church, God. We thank you for, for everything that you have done for us, Father God. We thank you. We stand in your presence and we lift our hands and we lift our voice and we offer up this praise to you, this sacrifice of praise, this sacrifice of thanksgiving, this sacrifice of worship, God. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name. 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 Jesus, the one who saves. Jesus, the one who delivers. Jesus, the one who breaks the curse. Jesus, the one who brings us out of our dark places. Jesus, you are the light of life and you are the light of this world. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name. Jehovah Jireh, you have provided for us. We lift up your name. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shalom. You are Emmanuel, the God that is with us. We praise you. We worship you. We Today and be made complete. I'm 
Johnny! 
to the from cross. From the earth to the my cross, death. my death from the cross to the from cross. cross. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Say, by your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the defeat. Resurrected the King resurrected is King resurrecting me. In your name, I, In come, your name alive. I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected, the resurrected King, King resurrected. is resurrected. By, spirit. By your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the resurrected. The resurrected King is resurrected. Is resurrected. Me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. Is risen, hallelujah. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Christ is risen, say that with me. one day soon return 
and, 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 and he's coming back but he's not just coming back just to be here he's coming back to set up his kingdom yeah. on this earth and he shall reign forever and ever he's yeah. coming back are you excited about yeah. the king that's coming back are you excited about our savior our beautiful savior that will return to deliver us from this vile wicked earth God thank you thank you, thank you that you don't abandon us thank but that you've given us a hope thank you, and a future yeah. and that future is in you so we look to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We look to you. We look upon your beautiful face this morning. We lift our eyes to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And we look to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our eyes are fixed on you. Thank you, Jesus. The cross before us. Yes. The world behind us. Yes. The cross before us. Yes. The world behind us. The cross before us. The world behind us. The cross before us. The world behind us. This cross will carry until we see Jesus. The cross before us. The world behind us. So we look to you, Jesus. We look to you. We look to you. Yes, Yeshua, our Savior, our Deliverer. He is the most beautiful one. He is the most beautiful one. Yes. He is the most beautiful Thank one. Thank you, Jesus. 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 My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you of the most beautiful one among thousands he is described in the scriptures as a conquering king so close your eyes for a moment and picture him the ancient of days his eyes like fire his hair like wool his voice of many waters his face shining like the sun full of strength 
he comes riding on a white horse his robe is dipped in blood on his head he wears many crowns and on his robe and tattooed on his thigh are the words king of kings and lord of lords from his mouth comes a sharp sword that he will use to strike down the nations that he will then use to rule with an iron rod behind him are the armies of heaven also riding on white horses this is our beloved king this is the most beautiful one the king of all kings the lord of all lords his alone is power his alone is glory his alone is our strength his alone is the kingdom both now and forever christ jesus the messiah yeshua 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 christ jesus the messiah yeshua yeshua lift your voice and call him yeshua yeshua situation it doesn't matter the songwriter penned this song one of the oldies I love it says he walks with me he talks with me tells me I'm his own. Come on now. That means that's telling me he's taking ownership. He's saying you are mine. I'm in you and you're in me. That's right. When you invite him in, he comes in. Sometimes he does a little house cleaning. He throws some things out. Lord, you throw, you getting rid of that? Oh, Lord. Uh, uh. Lord, you get rid of that person? Oh, I, I thought, well, you thought wrong. God is good. Eternal God and Father, we bless and praise your name. 
You're worthy to be praised. You alone are God all by yourself. You have no equal. You have no rival. None of us can boast and say we've given you sound advice, a wise counsel. Not at all. You don't owe us anything. Everything seen and unseen, everything above our imagination, all belongs to you. But yet you're mindful of us, you love us, and we thank you for it, Father. Your love is our greatest treasure. There's nothing greater than your love for us. You love us so much that you gave us your son, our greatest gift, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Something about that name, Jesus. Something about that name, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that you gave your life. You fulfilled the scriptures. We thank you for your blood that was shed for us. That cleansing blood. That redemptive blood. We just bless your name. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. He who is with us and upon us now. Oh, Spirit, we thank you for your reminding us of who we are and who we belong to. We thank you that when the evil one comes to kill, steal, and or destroy, you always show us a way of escape. You're always there. You're always there. And so we thank you. Father, this congregation stands before you. We've entered the gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and with praise upon our lips. We know from whom our help comes from. There's no doubt, no questions in our mind. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And so, Father, we just thank you. We ask that you would bless us, Father. There are some who are experiencing uh, pain and disease in their body right now. But, Father God, we know your name is greater than any cancer. Your name is greater than any heart problem. Your name is greater than diabetes. Your name is greater than arthritis. When, when our organs don't work right, your name is greater than when any organs we might have. Father, your name is greater than any mental problems we might have. Father, your name is greater than any financial problems we might have. Broken relationships, divided families. Father, your name is greater. And we just thank you. Father, we pronounce your, the name of Jesus upon everybody that's here. We thank you, Father, that we are in your presence and what you're doing for us, each one of us. Oh, Lord, you have showed us how to love one another. Help us to love one another. You showed us how to care for one another. Help us to care for one another. Help us, oh God, to serve one another. We thank you for what you're doing, what you've done. And Father God, we thank you for every ministry in this place. We thank you from the little ones to the seniors. We thank you, gracious God, for the leaders, oh gracious God. We thank you for um, the, our, our maintenance. We thank you for security. We thank you for everybody that's part of this service. We ask, oh God, that you would lead us in what you would have us to do. We thank you for the missions for outside of going, spreading your word to different neighborhoods. We thank you, Father God, for the meeting yesterday. The Holy Spirit is doing some great things in this church. We thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so, God, as we ask that the Holy Spirit take full control of this service, we ask, oh God, that you would bless our bishop as he's bringing the words. I pray, oh God, that you would touch him in the mighty name of Jesus. Renew his strength, oh God, I pray. Give him a fresh anointing as he brings the word this morning. Cause his latter years to be greater than his former. In the mighty name of Jesus. Cause him to, to experience the seeds that you've blessed through his, his being, that you've blessed others. Cause him to be able to smell the sweet fragrance of those lives that he has sowed into. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for our Pastor Oliver and First Lady Denise. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you bind them together as a couple in the name of Jesus. Bless their marriage, oh Father, I pray. Bless their family, bless their children, bless their home. We pray, oh Heavenly Father, that you will bless whatever their hands touch in the name of Jesus.
We thank you, O oh God, how you have blessed him, how he can divide the word in pieces that we can understand and digest. We thank you, Father. And so, Father, we ask your blessing continuous on this, on this, in this service. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. And just in case we forget your strength and your power, you ordained before time that the moon would pass between the earth and the sun. Father God, that is, that's what kind of God that we serve. So we just bless you and praise you. We be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise. It all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Amen. It's good to know that he walks with us. And he talks with us. Has he told you lately that you're his own? There's security in that. There's strength in that. I want to extend a warm welcome to some special people that may be in our midst today. If you're here with us, for the first time on a Sunday morning, would you wave your hand so that we can acknowledge you? Amen, amen, amen. I see you in the back. God bless you. We pray that God would give you exactly what you need and that he would build you up on every side. I wanna say a few things just before we prepare our hearts for communion. The, the youth are going on a missions trip, as I mentioned last week. Thank you for your generosity. They have a goal of raising a pretty sizable sum. So they're gonna be doing some fundraising. I ask that we all support them. And as I mentioned, every fifth Sunday, we'll take up an offering for them. It'll be their service every fifth Sunday will be a service that will be led and directed by family life and will engage the youth. But when they, um, as they're planning to go to Tennessee, rather than drive, if they want to fly, rather than drive across the country, it'll cost them approximately $12,000. And so somebody whistled at that. <laughs> that is a, I heard that's a small thing. Yeah, yeah, he's more than able. And so I just wanted to let you know that we want to support them. We believe that this will be life-changing and some of the things that we have planned for them as we do life with them so that they embrace the church. I heard a wonderful story. I want to commend the media team for having the children engaged. I heard a story about a young man who said to his mother, I love my church. Can I go with you tonight? It was Tuesday night Bible study. And she said, that's for adults. But to hear that that child perceives this church not just as his mother's church, not just as his father's church or his grandparents, but his church. That's what happens when they're engaged. That's what happens when we respond to them and let them have a platform and be heard. And so I love what the media team is doing. They're taking all comers and they're developing them. May God continue to open doors for our youth in the church and outside of the church. I also want to briefly mention that on May 4th, 
uh, we're going to have a conference. For those of you who were here yesterday, I talked about May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And we're going to have a conference and have some com begin a conversation. We'll begin it in April and we'll continue it in May about our mental wellness, something that has not been talked about or ministered to enough in the church. I had a personal breaking point on Friday talking to a longtime friend, and they were talking about some of the struggles that they see in the youth and in their own children. And they said something like, they need therapy. And maybe even the church can help. And that convicted me because that means in this person's mind, the church is a backstop. It's not the place you go for that kind of thing. It's a place where it's stigmatized because it it's, appears to be the antithesis or the opposite of faith. That is not true. We're going to open up the scripture and we're going to squash that narrative. God cares about the whole person. You cannot be whole if your mind isn't right. You can't be whole if your body is not right. And it's acceptable in our society to, society to go to a doctor for your heart, or for any other condition, but the mind. And I can't wait for us to open the scriptures together. So register for that on May 4th. There'll be tables out in the narthex. You can also register online. We are wholeheartedly going to pursue this thing so that people can be healed. And no, there's no need to wear a mask in the church. If there's any place on earth, underneath heaven, where we ought to be able to be real and transparent is this house, it's God's house. The God who knows everything, the God who sees everything, his people ought to be trusted with intimate things. So let's prepare our heart for communion. First, let us pray. Father, we come in obedience to your word. The Lord Jesus Christ told us that as often as we do this, we show forth his death till he comes. And your servant Paul gave us instruction on how to do it, that we ought to examine ourselves examine ourselves and so God we take this moment to examine ourselves the things that we have said or done or thought that are not like you whether knowingly or in ignorance God we repent we're sorry we realize that there was a time when you winked at ignorance. But in these last days, you're calling all of us to repentance. And so God, we bow down before you and we say, we ask you to forgive us. Sometimes our sinful nature rises up. Help us to win as the spirit and the flesh wrestle May we walk in the spirit and never in the flesh. But now, God, wash us with hyssop. Make us clean. Cleanse us that we might be found worthy to commune with the broken body of your son. And once again, to be plunged in the blood that was drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Cleanse us together now as we partake of this sacred sacrament. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray and by him we give thanks and together we say amen. Come on, say amen. amen. I want, I'm led today as you access the elements 
to talk to you for just a few minutes. And rather than put the verses up, one of the things that the Lord wants us to know is a great lesson that can be learned on that day, that last night before he was betrayed, is how much heaven values us serving one another. Before they broke bread, Jesus washed the feet of all 12 of them. He knew who it was who was going to betray him. And even though he knew who he was, he put that towel around his waist and washed his feet. And the one who reverenced him so much, Peter, Lord, you shall never wash my feet. He said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And in an instant, he said, not my feet only, but my head and everything. He said, those who are already bathed, those who are clean, only need their feet washed. And what he was saying, he said to them before the Last Supper, he said, now you are clean through the word. I've sanctified you through the truth. That's why truth has power. It sets us apart. It makes us different from the world. And it qualifies us to take communion. The reason Paul instructed us to examine ourselves, he tells us after, that many are asleep because you did it wrong. You don't come to the Lord's table unless you're in right standing with him. This is a serious thing, and that's why we pray. That's why we repent. That's why we get ourselves right. So the lesson before they broke bread, he wanted to teach them about service. And he said to them, as he's saying to us, you don't understand what I'm doing now. But what the Lord has made clear is we understand it when we're in a situation where someone you know has, is betraying you. Someone who dishonors you, who, who smiles in your face and gives you a kiss after the most agonizing hour of his life in the garden. He kissed him. And Jesus still didn't expose him because love covers. But after washing their feet, they got together and they broke bread. They ate because it was a feast. And after the feast, after they had eaten, they broke bread. See, this bread wasn't simply for food. That's why Paul rebuked the Corinthians for coming there hungry, acting gluttonous, and drinking so much wine that they got happy. <laughs> He said, don't be drunk with wine, be drunk with the Spirit. But the Lord blessed the bread. He prayed and he blessed it. And after that, he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat all of it. Let's eat together. And in like manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed, shed for you. Drink all of it. And after that, after that, they sang a hymn. And how many of you know that these are the days of Elijah? There's no God like Jehovah. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. 
And these are the days of your servant Moses' righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Say, Behold, He comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel. And these are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming the dry as flesh. Bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of and your servant David. The days of your servant rebuilding David, a temple of praise. A temple of praise. And these are and the days. These are the days of the harvest. The fields are the as white. The fields are as white in the world. And we are your and laborers. We are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word Say of the Lord. He holds. He comes. At the trumpet's call, lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hills, salvation comes. Behold, He 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 comes.
in little things and little people. I, I, I'm still overwhelmed with the fact of my pastor making me his helper when I was 11 years old. And um, we had about, it was vacation Bible school. I'm a vacation Bible school person. I'm a product of VBS. And by the way, since I'm, I'm saying that, this is not part of the message, but let me make an announcement. How many of you plan to work in, in vacation Bible school this year? Could you stand, please? Could you stand, please? Because it's a very powerful, life-transforming ministry. But there's something unique about serving in VBS, and you need to understand it. You may have the children come for the first day, and you may pray with them and teach them. But they're not coming back the second day because of the prayers or the message or the teachings. They're not coming back the second day because they like the church. They're coming back the second day because they like you. Don't forget it. And the way to get them to like you is to give them tasks and assignments so they have to come back tomorrow to let you know that they did their tasks. Does that make sense? tasks and assignments because you may think oh they come back because they love the church or they didn't come back because they love, didn't love the church they will come back if you give them tasks and assignments and they'll come back to let you know that they did it that's just a tip thank you very much that, that alone deserves a love offering did you think pastor <laughs> But my topic is, there can be big potential in little people and little things. Great potential in every child, every teenager, every adult, and every one of you here today. The devil would have us doubt our potential he would have us think we're just ordinary in comparison to somebody else. But the truth is, we're not just ordinary. We're special. And if, if you don't feel you're special, no one will think you are. So you have to think and know that you're special and function as a person who is special because it does make a difference. At age 11, my pastor saw something in me, 11 years old, and made me his helper, 11 years old. I didn't go back to that church the next day for VBS because I love the church. I didn't go back to that church the next day because I liked the teaching. I went back the next day because of a relationship. I was his helper. And I felt I need to be there because I am his helper. And that's one of the things that my mother couldn't understand because we were a Roman Catholic family. And why am I so stuck now in this new church? It wasn't the church, it wasn't the building, it wasn't the doctrine. It was the relationship. Relationship. This is why worship Worship is part relationship. Relationship. If you, if you worship and don't build relationships, you're missing what the church is. The church is a family. A family. And we greet family members. So if we have the benediction and you rush right out, you're missing what the church is. It's not the sermon that is preached, as good as a preacher is, and he's a good preacher. But it's also the relationships we build and the friendships we build, Amen. the friendships. If I were to, be, were to have an emergency at two o'clock in the morning, whom would I call? 
And if you were to have an emergency at 2 o'clock in the morning, who would you call? You would call the person who honest, you honestly believe would respond to you. It's not the titles. It's the relationship. And if the relationship is there, you know you're not disturbing that person. Are you there? The person may say, who is that calling me at this hour? But once they pick up the phone and find out it's you, they say, what's happening? Relationships. Relationships. Are you there? Now, the truth is, I can end the sermon right there. Relationships. We are a family. We are a family. We are a family. And family members take time to interact with one another, build relationships, say, how are you doing, dear? How are you? We don't just rush out the door. Am I making sense? Okay. No. Am I making dollars? (laughs) I'm moving from sense. (laughs) I want you to know deep down in my heart that I love you. Do you believe that? I do. And I want you to know that deep down in my heart, I believe that you love me. I do. I really do. I honestly do. Love you very much. God has created a number of little things, and there is potential and value in those little things. I have something in a plastic bag right here. And I need Evan Baldy to count them because he's a smart person. He can count. Oh, the Could, him. Yeah? The, the him. him. The male. The male. Let me start with the female first. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll see if, she, if you can confirm what she counted. Mm. How many objects are there in this bag? Hmm? Four. Four. Objects. Will you confirm if she's correct? Always. <laughs> Would you? Do you have a love offering for him? Do you have a love offering for him? <laughs> always. I said always. There are four objects in this plastic bag. And what I have here are not just four objects, but I have four potential miracles in my hand. Each of these objects will produce a miracle, every one of them, each of them. So I'm holding in my hand four miracles. They will produce miracles right here. And you say, well, what could you have in your hand that are mir- that would produce miracles? Miracles. Miracles. Could we have the first slide, please? It says the slide, the first slide. Okay. These four things are acorns. And there's something that is fast asleep in every one of them. They are capable of doing miracles, but they're fast asleep. Fast asleep. I could apply that to ourselves that we are capable of doing miracles. But many of us are fast asleep. And when you're fast asleep, you don't understand or can't comprehend your potential. Because why? You're sleeping. And these four acorns that I picked up in the grass, on the campus, under the oak tree, Mm -hmm. I went searching for them. They have potential to 
to become miracles, but they're asleep. They're asleep. Just as human beings, we have the potential for miracles. But when you're asleep, you're not conscious of who you are until something in your body says, you better get up. I wouldn't say get up for what, but you better get up. And so you become conscious that you need to get up and go to the bathroom. Now you can decide not to get up. <laughs> After all, it's a free country. It's a free <laughs> but wisdom suggests that you get up because your body is talking to you. And so you respond. And you wake up. These four acorns in my hand are asleep. They're asleep. And because they're asleep, they cannot function based on their potential. Just as you and I cannot function based on our potential when we're sleeping. So for these four little acorns to function in their potential, they have to wake up. They have to wake up. Could we have the next slide, please? The next slide. Potential. 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 You have potential. You have potential, you have potential, you have potential. But you may be asleep. And when you're asleep, you're not aware of who you, you're not aware of who you are. And if you're not aware of who you are, you can't be aware of what your potential is. Amen, are you with me? Yes, so then we have to figure out, if I can't be aware of who I am when I'm sleeping, and I can't be aware of what my potential is when I'm sleeping, then how in the world do I wake up? Because until I wake up, I don't know who I am. As a matter of fact, when you're sleeping, you don't even know where you are. I have to wake up. These four acorns will sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep until I position them to wake up. Until I position them to wake up. I found them on the campus, on the ground, under the big oak tree. Now, how do we position them to wake up? About 300 years ago, Someone, we don't know who the someone is, had some acorns. And that person, and, and they, were, they were sleeping. And that person, whoever he was or she was, positioned these acorns to wake up. And they, the person positioned them on a piece of land in Germantown, which we now call the New Covenant Campus. Come on, sir. About 300 years ago. We don't know who the person is, but we do know that somebody positioned them to wake up on a piece of land that would 30 years ago eventually be called the New Covenant Campus. And therefore, I was now able to find them where? On the New Covenant campus. I found the results of them. I found the, the waking reality of them on the New Covenant campus. They were sleeping. Somebody positioned them to wake up. And they woke up right where that individual or individuals positioned them. And they manifested the reality 
of their being awake and alive. Now, these are alive, but they're not awake. Not alive. Taking my time. So did we see the slide with a, with a picture of the acorn? Did we see the slide with a picture of the acorn? Okay. When we go to sleep, we're not conscious of who we are or where we are. Until someone, someone or some situation wakes us up. On Tuesday of this week, something happened. A gigantic 985 foot long vessel lost power. Lost power and began to drift. A gigantic vessel, 985 pound vessel, no, 985 foot vessel, lost power and began to drift. The captain put out a mayday call saying it's an emergency. And the ship continued to drift with all its capacity and all its power, all its ingenuity, the dynamics. It began to drift until it drifted where? Into one of the foundation supports of the bridge. The captain couldn't control it because it's drifting. There's nothing he could have done because it's drifting. He's lost power. He's, well, he can't steer it. Can you imagine driving a car and the steering wheel breaks off? <laughs> Being on the highway, you're driving a car on a highway and the steering wheel breaks off the car. In addition to saying, help me Jesus, what else? <laughs> That's what happened that day on Tuesday. The ship lost power. The captain could do nothing with all his knowledge, his know-how, his education, his skills. He could do nothing. Why? Because the ship lost power. The electric grill closed down and the ship was adrift. And I can see the captain seeing this big bridge in front of him. But there's nothing he can do. There's nothing he could have done. And the ship ran into the one of the foundations of the bridge. And if you break down the foundation, the bridge is going to collapse. And that's what happened. So, <laughs> the loss of power. The loss of power. I plan when I leave here, when, when, tomorrow sometime, to position these four seeds to wake up. I plan to do that. And how do you wake them up? How do you wake up any seed? Because every seed has potential and power. Every seed has life. Every seed. But how do you wake it up? Huh? Huh? You put it in the ground, you plant it. You plant it. You plant it. And make sure there's water. Somebody, about 300 years ago, planted some seeds like these in a piece of land which we now call New Covenant Campus. And for those old timers, remember, when we were building this sanctuary, we had left Ardley and Johnson Street because our contract was up, 
and we came to the campus and we had services outdoors called what? Cathedrals of the Oaks. We, every Sunday we had service outside under the oak trees. And there was no rain until the day we walked into this building. That's true. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. The day we walked into this building, it rained and rained and rained. And I said, God, you are something else. Thank you, Jesus. You remember that? Yeah. It rained. All the time we were worshiping under those trees, there was no rain. And the one day, the contractor says, you can move into this church. And we moved in and poured and poured and poured. I, I think God was laughing. I honestly believe God was, God was having a time laughing. It poured and poured and poured. You wake it up by putting it to work. You wake up these miracles by putting them to work. When you put them in the soil and make sure it's moist, something happens from the inside of these bulbs. Life begins to manifest itself. And after a while, you see something coming up. And as a result of that, we have these major, mighty oak trees on this campus. Somebody put them to work. It's like you're having money in your pocket. It's not creating interest. Am I true or false? You don't take your money out and say, oh man, I just, this, this thing just made 10% interest. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make 10% interest in your pocket. Now I put it in my pocket, I may give you 1% interest. <laughs> but somebody planted these and put them to work and woke them up in the ground. And that's one of the reasons why we have these majestic trees on this campus. Many of them are oaks. Somebody planted them and put them to work. Starting with the little things. Sometimes we think to get big miracles, we have to have big things. Mm. Don't we? Mm. Big things. And yet, big miracles can come from small things. But we are not programmed to recognize the potential of the small things. There's something about our society that blocks us from recognizing the potential of little things and little people. But when, when you build relationships with children, you are doing something that will positively, well, the right relationship to children you're doing something that will positively impact their lives for generations. I told someone yesterday that they had, they had done something for a child. And I said, 50 years from now, that child will remember you, will remember you. 50 years from now. I still remember persons who spoke into my life 50 years ago and 60 years ago. They're all gone now. They're all gone. But the person whose life they spoke is alive and benefited from what they shared. I remember the person who said to me, um, well, I just did it. He says, when you're speaking, don't say, um, um, um. Do you know what I mean? When you're speaking, don't say, um, 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 um. It's a habit. It's a bad habit. And the person says, when you're speaking, just speak. I learned to do that. 
left out the arms, arms, arms. I'm watching my time, so. There are big things that can come from small situations, small touches. And this, just this week, that big cargo ship, loaded, absolutely loaded, lost power, and began to drift. Whenever we lose power, we begin to drift. Whenever we lose power, we begin to drift. The tragedy is that so many people don't know they've lost power. The scriptures say, it is God who gives us power. The book of Acts, you shall receive power. You shall receive power. When? When the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses, which means you'll have the potential, the energy to be my witnesses in, in where? Judea, Samaria, in the utmost parts of the world. When you receive power, power, can you lose that power? Is it possible to receive power and lose it? Is it possible? Is it possible to lose not simply the power but the sense of the power, the consciousness of the power. Because you have no power if you don't have the consciousness of the power. Are you there? You have no power if you don't have the consciousness of it. I appreciate Elder Duckett and her dear husband. Where is he? I have to add him too, so I wouldn't get into trouble. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, there he is. There. I appreciate both of you. But you know, there are areas in which she helps me in very subtle ways. And I appreciate it. I do. Now, the person just coughed. I, I, I like him too. <laughs> Why don't you stand? <laughs> This is, this is my buddy. This is my buddy. Okay. This okay. is my buddy. If I had an emergency at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I called him, he'd be there. Because it has to do with the relationships we build, the power. The power is in the relationships we build. And I can know that if I have an emergency, I don't have to wonder who can I call. There are many, many persons in this church I feel I can call, and they wouldn't feel upset that I've awakened them. Why? Because of relationship. Am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. The mighty ship drifted. Imagine if you were the captain of that ship, loaded with merchandise, realizing you've lost power, and there's nothing you can do. Nothing. You're watching this ship drifting along. There's nothing you can do. He sent out a mayday call. May they, may they, but there was nothing around to help. And even if there was something around, it couldn't help a ship of that size. 
because that's one of the biggest ships built. Totally helpless. Totally helpless. And maybe, maybe, maybe God might have been in the fact of that ship ramming that bridge. Because if it had not rammed that bridge, which would stop it from drifting, who knows where it would have gone? Who knows? Who could imagine where it would have gone? So there are times when we see things as accidents and bad and terrible. They have to stop and say, could God be in that? Could God be in that? I'll tell you something. God is in everything. He has to be. God is in everything. He has to be. If he's not in everything, he couldn't be God. He's in everything that deals with you and your family. And he is the Alpha and the Omega which means the beginning and the end. He knew you. God knew you. Now, your mother, when did your mother know you? <laughs> Come, I'm talking to you. When do you think your mom knew you? Before I was born. Before you were born, she knew, she didn't exactly who you were and who you would be. She just knew she had something in her. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. But when you came out of her. Then she really got to know you. Oh, then she really got to know you. <laughs> she really got to know you. And she knew you were a girl. Yes. That's right. God knows your end from when? From your beginning. And God knows everything, the end of everything from its beginning. I became involved in the church at age 11. We were a Roman Catholic family, and now I'm involved in a non-Catholic church. And I built a relationship with the pastor who has made me his helper. That pastor... in apart from the fact that my biological father was responsible for my being alive, being here. Are you with me? You with me? Yeah. My biological father was responsible for my being here. But apart from that responsibility, my pastor has done more for me than my father since I've been around, since, since I've been alive. And so, my mother couldn't understand why I'm so caught up in this church. It wasn't the religion, it wasn't the building, it was the relationship. The relationship. It was the relationship that caused me to go back and back and back and back and back and be active, very active, become a 13, 12 and 13 and 14 and the youth leader and president of the youth, youth ministries. My pastor drove me to a country church to run my first revival when I was 13. He saw something in me. And he couldn't know that I would one day succeed him as pastor of that church. But there's some things you'll never know about people if you don't build your relationships. drifted, lost power, and drifted. Could we have the next slide, please? The next slide. This little acorn, this little acorn had the power and the potential to produce a mighty oak tree. 
and that oak tree is on this campus. Remember I said about 300 years ago, somebody woke it up by putting it in the ground? That's the result of their act of putting it in the ground to wake it up, and it woke up. That's the result of it. It's a massive tree, and there's several of them on the campus. Several. And the person who planted it didn't live to see it because I don't know of anybody around here who is 300 years old. <laughs> but when you do something that is right and good, it will live after you. You will be in the grave, but what you have done for someone or for God will continue to live and generate grandchildren, as it were. Yes. Yes. And great-grandchildren. Great now, I want you to do something for me. Look at the roots. The mighty oak from that little acorn. Look at the roots. What message or messages are those roots saying? What messages are you, can you get from looking and examining those roots? Now, those roots are just the part of the roots that are above ground. But the roots below ground are many, many times bigger than that, be deeper than that, because unless it's deep, couldn't survive. We had a tree that was blown down on the campus this week. But this particular tree, which is right out here, across from Eagles Hall, had the roots spread out. And the roots deep down in the soil, giving it moisture, sustenance, stability. But what is unique about those roots? Anybody? What's unique about it? Yes. Strength. By the way, um, do we have a mic? Do we have some mics, please? The question is, what's unique about it? What, what messages? We, we sometimes aren't programmed to see messages. We rush past things, and we don't observe. Do we, could there be more than one mic? Could we, could we have more than one mic? OK. Right over here. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's two sentences. That's the law. I have one word. I have one word, strength. strength. What's that, strength? You see strength. You see strength in that. Look, another hand, another hand back there, brother. You see strength in that. The vastness of Pardon me? The vastness the of the roots. The vastness, the spread of the roots to maintain the support of a massive oak tree. Go ahead. Durability. 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 They're reading, what they're doing, they're reading the roots. They're getting messages from the roots, just looking at the roots, just looking at the surface roots because we can't see the ones that are below the surface. But just, just examining the surface roots, you can figure out something. Go ahead. They're anchored. Oh, are Love, I can't hear you. They're anchors. Huh? They are anchors. I can't hear you. I don't speak right. Anchors. Anchors. They anchored. Serve, They're they anchored. They serve as anchors. They're anchored. The that tree is anchored. And anchored means that it can withstand the storms and the tests. It has the depth and the width of the roots. It's anchor. That's a beautiful word. Oh, uh, anchor. Oh, Over here. The roots, <laughs> seen <laughs> and unseen. The seen and the unseen. Have it firmly rooted. Yes. The, have the tree firmly rooted. Yes, p permanently rooted. The seen, the unseen. And yet the seen can give us some sense of the depth of the unseen. Are you there? You're there. Okay, anyone else? Over here. Over here. Okay, so I, it looks like to me that the old... Where, where's the person? Where's the person? Standing okay, up. go ahead, loudly so I right can hear you. Right in front of your face. <laughs> okay, um, it looks like the old roots are underneath. 
and the new ones are on top, so it's Okay, gotcha. I can't hear you. What? Can you hear? Can you? I can hear, but I can't understand. Old roots underneath the grass. Probably our ancestors, or I don't know. I don't want to say that, but it looks like the new roots. Is God showing us like this new beginning, stronger, better? Underneath is the old. The new growth. Maybe. maybe. The new growth. I'm wrong. New growth. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Loudly. Um, the potential of the tree. Loudly. Spread. Loudly. The potential of the tree has spread um, larger, got, got, got okay. bigger. The, the, I'm coming, so I can hear you clearly. The potential of the tree it has spread. Speak to the mic so everybody can hear you. Uh, the potential of the tree has spread um, into different soils and different areas. And okay, started the to potential. Other, yeah, started to affect other things. Yes, the, the potential. potential. It, shows, it shows the potential of the tree in the spread of its roots, the capacity to absorb water, it's, it's, it's anchored, it's anchored. Anyone else? Yes. The Bible says despise not small beginnings. Yes, the Bible says despise not small beginnings. The root system shows equilibrium, the root system shows what? Equilibrium. 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 Yes, and um, it's uh, concentric. So that all the roots around would be at the very same distance throughout the, uh, yes. around the tree. All the roots are spread out. All the roots are spread out around the trunk of the tree, giving it balance and support. Did you say something? Sure, you'd like to. Tell me and I, I'll repeat it. There are many roots yes. that have grown from the one that hold up the one. Ah, there are many roots that have grown from the main one that is holding up the tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many roots. Many roots. Many roots, yes. We got, we got, we have little Stability. Guy. Stability. When, when we lose power, we begin to drift. And power gives us stability. It anchors us. It anchors us. Anyone else? Right here? Yes. Right here? A little child. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming, sir, because I want everyone to hear. I'm looking at my time. It demonstrates the health of the tree. Ah, it demonstrates the hope. The health, the health, the health, the health of the tree is demonstrated as you look at the roots. Go ahead. Tell me. The roots are telling, telling you that I am here to stay. Oh! Wow! Wow! The roots, the roots tell him that I'm here to stay. That's all right. Where there are no solid roots, we drift. We're not there to stay. The roots, the roots say, I'm here to stay. Wow. That is awesome. I mean, that is awesome. Give him another hand, please. He has something else to tell me. Amen. That was a message. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he has something else to say. What's your name? Okay. Ellis. Aaron. Ellis. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to get his name and phone number, please. After the service. <laughs> wow. Who's another one? Who is that? Who is, who is the other person? Okay, back here. Yes. 
Um, the roots are demonstrating distance. That it, where it started is not could, where. Could you start again so I can hear you, please? The roots are demonstrating distance. It has a far reach, far from where it began. Just ah. like ministries, it starts one place, but it can the spread far away. The seed was sown one spot, and the roots show the distance yes. of its yes. influence. Yes. yes. Wow. 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 Anyone else? Do I see it? Oh. The roots mean... The tree became oh. a bigger asset to its environment. What, what's that? What's that? The tree became a bigger asset to its environment. Amen. Well, I can't... I, 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 I the, didn't tree, the tree... Uh, what's that? The tree... Loudly. loudly the familiar. tree <laughs> became a, a big asset to its environment. Yes. It's an asset to the environment. It's an asset... The environment. Okay, the roots uh, represent time because you can't just jump into something. It takes time to develop. It takes time to develop. It takes time. It takes time to develop. It takes time, which suggests don't always judge people where they are today. Go ahead. Because it takes time, not just for trees, but for people right. to develop. Amen. And the person you may throw away today might become something significant tomorrow. Anyone else? The determination to grow. What's that? Determ determined to grow. Determined to grow. It was determined. The tree was determined to grow. It was determined to grow. Go ahead. Um, the seed had to die. The seed the had to die first. It was alive. The roots became yes. strong. The yes. seed had to die. Yes. The life was in the seed. The life is in the seed. The life is in the seed. But it had to be deposited in the ground. Deposited in the ground. We prefer so many times to carry the seeds in our pockets. But the seeds that I have here in my pocket will never produce anything. They will stay in my pocket. And sometimes you have to take things out of your pocket and plant them. You have to take things out of your mind and plant them in somebody else's brain. You have to take the big ideas you're thinking about and plant them to somebody else and realize that when you plant them, the person might be small, but they'll grow up with them. And they'll become part of your harvest because you did the planting. Yeah. Um, they provide, roots provide reinforcement also for the tree. So whatever work Go the slowly tree... so I can hear you. I can oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the roots provide the root? reinforcement the, for the does, tree. The root what? Provide reinforcement? Yes, the roots provide reinforcement, reinforcement for, the for the tree. So yes. whatever the job is, if it's to shade somebody... Yes whether it's to provide strength, strength. Um, for the community, whether it's to provide oxygen, oxygen. the roots, they're going the to provide support that. support them and provide a number of nutrients for the tree. The roots are superficial. The roots are what? Superficial. What's On that? the surface. Yeah, superficial. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, they should be in the soil, but there may be a rock that prevents it. So it has to spread to be anchored, like the young man said, I've come to stay. Yeah, but, but in that particular case, okay, but, but if you look at those roots, it would be very difficult for a rock to prevent it because 
it is determined to take over. It's spreading. It's spreading. It's spreading its, its, its um, presence. Its presence. And there might very well have been. But it should be in the soil to be anchored. Yeah, but, but what you're seeing there is just the, the surface yes. of the roots. Yes. There's a depth in there. Because if, that, if those roots were not that deep, that tree couldn't be standing. And we have several oak trees that are there. And we had a tree that the wind this week blew it down. It's a totally different type of tree. Okay. But if we are not anchored, we will drift. Except the corn of wheat drops to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But because of the depth of that tree and the death, it brings forth more fruit. Right. So it's a fruit-bearing tree. And if I may say this, and it's a little, I get a little teary-eyed, and you're talking about people, people. speaking into your life yes. as a little ordinary person, years old. and they put a potential in you, my mind immediately went to Pastor Hyacinth yes. and all that she spoke into my life while she was still. So she dropped seeds inside of me. And because of the seeds on the inside of me, I am growing like a tree. Wow. Wow. I could not, I could not be the man I am if it had not been for the investment Pastor Hyacinth made in me. Yes. Almost 60 years. The wisdom. Now, I, I know the, Pastor Bob says we have to dismiss at a certain time. <laughs> so we'll probably have a part two at a later time. Amen. But something happens in our lives when we lose the power just as that ship, as powerful as it was, lost electric power and drifted. Something happens when we don't stay in touch with the power. But can, can we lose the power? Is it possible to lose the power? I probably need to end with that. Is it possible? to lose the power. There's a passage of scripture. Let me get it to you. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and the utmost parts of the earth. What happens with the power when we don't use it? When we don't use it for its purpose? When we don't use it for its purpose? Here's what we have in Psalm 51, the Psalm from David. David cries out in Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, O God according to the loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercy, blot out my transgression. Now David had, could admit, had a problem, um, um, a sexual problem, and he's now confessing it and, and, and repenting before God. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be that in my sight, that you may be found just when you speak. And then he continues in verse eleven. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your spirit from me. Do not cast me away from your presence and and do not take your spirit from me. Which suggests it's possible 
to lose the power. Possible. If we don't repent before the Lord. And we, when we lose it, we continue drifting, just drifting and drifting, drifting. But let me finalize this very quickly. The power of God is always available to us. And it's most active in our lives when we are obeying God and doing what the power is there for. Do you ever go into your house and see all the lights on? And you ask, who, who turned on all these lights? No, no, he didn't do it. No, no, he did not do it. He didn't do it. <laughs> Somebody left all the lights on. What is happening? You lo- you're wasting power. You're wasting power. And you're going to pay for it because the bill is going to come in. The same is true for life. When we waste the power, we pay the price. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you be my witnesses. That's the purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit. My witnesses. And your roots are spread as you witness. Your stability is more definite as you witness. Because when you're witnessing, you're saying to the world or to persons, it's not about me, it's Jesus. Whatever you see in me, it's Jesus. He is from the beginning to the end. There's nothing about you that God doesn't know. Uh, And there's nothing about you where God wasn't present. Why? He had to be present. Because he's God. And he's everywhere. So once you realize that there's nothing you can do, not that God doesn't know it, but he isn't present when you're doing it. It gives you the ability to take advantage of the power and to stop drifting. And many of you, and I'm I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up. (laughs) Many of you know people who you feel are just drifting. Some are friends and some are relatives. They're drifting and stuck. They hit a bridge in their lives and they're stuck. And some of us have drifted and we're stuck, if you would be honest. But there's something about the captain, our captain. He's always present. And his system, his electric system always works. And I can always come to him, regardless of what my situation is, I can always come to him and call him, and he'll say, don't, lo- don't speak so loudly, I'm right here. Whither shall I, where shall I go from your presence, and where shall I flee from your spirit? I'm going to ask Pastor Oliver for another opportunity at some time, at some time. I, um, I need your prayers because I leave here tomorrow to travel and I'll be ministering and I'll be away for several Sundays. So when you don't see me there on Sunday, you don't think I'm ill. <laughs> but I need your prayers as I minister in different places, different countries. God would give me wisdom and strength. Shall we pray? I give you thanks, O Lord, for your presence and your spirit. I thank you for the pastor who led this 11-year-old boy to you and saw something in him, 
something in him that that pastor could have invested in. I'm so grateful, very grateful. I thank you for your word. Thank you for wisdom. We thank you for every single person here today. That every person will examine his or her life and his or her roots and take a thorough analysis of where he or she is. Let your Holy Spirit speak to all of us and direct our path and make us aware of your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, we can never, um, never lose the power, but we can lose consciousness of the power. You can't lose the power, but you can lose consciousness of the power. When you lose consciousness of the power, you lose consciousness of his presence. God bless you. Pastor. Thank you, sir. Let's give our chief teacher and bishop of this house Come on, he's going on a journey. It's all right to honor him. He's going on a journey. Would you keep standing for a moment and stretch your hands towards him? Father, we thank you for the wisdom, for the strength that you've continued to energize our bishop, our pastor, the overseer of this house, the one who planted, planted this ministry. We pray, God, that you would strengthen him with, his, with might and his inner man. We pray, God, that as he goes, you would go before him, prepare the way for him. God continue to remind him that his ladder shall be greater than his past. The latter shall be greater than the former. We speak this thing by faith. We say it is so, and so it is. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe that, give God a hand clap and give God a praise. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. We honor you and our hearts go with you. Thank you. Thank you. Our hearts go with you. Yes, sir. There might be someone in the building who decided after hearing this word that you want to be. You need to be planted in the vineyard. Jesus said his father has a vineyard. And he's the husband man. He's the one who takes care of it. He prunes so that we could be fruitful. This is your opportunity to come. If you want to be closer to God, if you want to receive him today, it's your opportunity to come. If you want to be a part of this fellowship, a part of this new covenant fellowship where we love God, we love people, and we share the gospel. Come. Come. Bless you, brother. He wants to fellowship with us and become a member. I think I see someone else coming.
Amen. God is doing a new thing. God bless you. What's your name? Cherise. What's your name, baby? Huh? Oh, nice to meet you. All right. I know that you've already been fellowshipping with the men and you've been on the Zoom, so now we're going to make it official. We're going to make it official. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. First, are you coming to join the church or to receive? Okay. They're all coming to be a part of the New Covenant family. Father, we thank you for these who've decided today to be planted in this part of the vineyard. God, we pray that they would grow, that their roots would go deep, and they would stretch wide. May they reach others with the love of God and with the truth of the gospel. When the wind blows, we call them a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that in its season shall bring forth fruit. May these four who stand before us never stand in the counsel of the ungodly, but may they be that tree that's planted by the rivers of water. We call them blessed. We receive them into this part of the, the vineyard as members of the family of God and locally of the New Ch Covenant Church of Philadelphia. We thank you for them. Bless them now and make them a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, New Covenant. Bless you. Bless you. And just before Pastor Wangoi comes for, for the offering and benediction, Mona, Mona, are you here? All right, I, was, I wanted to just especially welcome you. I heard that you were here. Pastor Wangoi, would you come? It's time to worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings. Oh, announcements first. Pastor Mungo, come and sit over here so you don't have to walk all the way. My name is Joy Sample. My name is Marley Matherin. My name is Bella. My name is Minister Sandra Baldi. My name is Lauren, and this is your Covenant Connection. Connection. Are you connected? Get connected and stay connected with the Covenant Connection. We have our couples movie night out happening Saturday, April 13th at the Regal Plymouth meeting. We'll be showing the film Unfailing Love based on the book of Hosea. And all couples are welcome, married, engaged, seriously dating. Please come out and join us. We just ask that you pre-purchase your tickets now. You can use the QR code that should be showing on your screen, or you can go on the New Covenant Church website under the Marriage Enrichment Ministries page. The Seniors Ministry is thrilled to announce an exciting journey to the heart of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., from August 15th to the 17th. This three-day, two-night adventure is packed with not just sites and sounds, but also fellowship and fun. Here's what's included in this unforgettable trip. Two nights lodging, two deluxe continental breakfasts, two full course dinners, transportation and sightseeing. Packages are available for single occupancy rooms at $658 and double occupancy rooms at $489 or family packages which include space for two adults or children under 12 for $409. A deposit of $60 will reserve your reservation. Remember final payments are due May 26. This is a wonderful opportunity to explore and learn and bond with fellow members of our church. Payments can be made through our Church Center app or by visiting the table in the narthex. Don't miss out on this special trip designed to win both spiritual enrichment 
and leisure in mind. Don't forget our mental health conference, God's Purpose for Wholeness, on May 4th, 2024. Join us for a day of enlightenment and inspiration focused on mental and emotional and spiritual wholeness. Lunch is definitely on us. So register by scanning the QR code or visiting nccop.church slash wholeness. But do me a favor, look to your left. Now look to your right. Do you know the people that you're surrounded by? Like, do you really know them? Like, what do they do for work? What is a hobby that they enjoy? Oftentimes we come to church, we don't really know all the people that we worship with, especially at a church of this size and magnitude, where there are so many of us. So starting in April, we're launching a series called Let Me Introduce Myself, giving everyone a chance to share just a bit about themselves. This is your opportunity to connect and learn about our church family. Anyone can participate. Just scan the QR code on the screen right now and sign up through our church center app. That's a good job, I like that. Are you a current health team volunteer, clinician, health administrator, educator, or do you just have a passion for promoting health consciousness? Then you are the perfect fit to join us on April 21st, immediately following the Sunday morning worship service for a discussion about health, wellness, and how we as a church community can work together to promote and maintain optimal health. The Jesus Therapy Co-op Sports Art Center Living Facility presents the Philadelphia Fellowship, a monthly Gen X, Y, and Z gathering featuring a DJ blend, freestyle flow, acoustic worship, and a movie screening of Jesus Saves, the true story of a Philly freestyle MC, part two, chapter one. It's all going down this Saturday, April the 13th in the Eagles Hall Auditorium. For tickets and more information, visit phillyfellowship.eventbrite.com. Stay connected with us so you don't miss an update. Subscribe to all our text, email, or phone call updates by texting the word text, email, or phone to 215-440-6610. If you're already receiving updates, don't worry, you're already connected. Just remember to only text one word at a time if you're subscribing to multiple update types. Download the Church Center app today. It's a treasure trove of information, including our church calendar, event listings, and important forms like baptism, baby dedication, or to notify us about a loved one's hospitalization or unfortunate loss. Stay informed and connected with this fantastic tool. Don't forget, you can also connect with us on our social media platforms. We're active on Facebook, Instagram, and we have our own YouTube channel. So stay in the loop with all the exciting happenings here at our church by following us. There are numerous ways to plug in. So you're never left out wondering, hey, what's going on at the church? Stay connected with us today. Then don't delay. Thank you for tuning in to the Outpouring Worship Experience here at the New Covenant Church of Philadelphia. For a full listing of events and activities that you can participate in, visit nccop.church slash events. Let's take a moment to give our tithes and offering. Here are the ways that you can give. You can text to give. Give through Givelify, through our secure website, or through the mail to 7500 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19119. As you've been faithful in tithes and in offerings, I'm asking you as often as you have discretion and you are led by the Spirit to give to the capital campaign so that we might be found faithful stewards of the grace of God and the upkeep of this campus so that generations to come will rise up and call us blessed. God bless you. God keep you as you give to CC21. We pray that God will bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name, amen.